Now that we've established what the cell membrane structure is, we can now look at the second part of the lecture and focus on the transport, because this lecture is entitled Membranes and Transport. And so we're going to have a series of flowcharts, and we'll start with flowchart 1 on transport, and we'll entitle it Transport 1, that define and tell us all about the types of cell transport. Because the cell is a living and breathing city. It is constantly taking things in and out. And this is all occurring via the gatekeeper. And that gatekeeper is the cell membrane. So it's very important to look at the structure and how it relates to the actual function that's going to be occurring at that structure. So that's what transport's all about. So let's look at some basic background information. This is stuff that you should know already or have a general idea of but it's still good to sort of just lay it all out. So, what we know is that the plasma membrane or the cell membrane um, is selectively permeable. You've probably heard this term before. It simply means that it picks and chooses what it wants to let in and out. Not anything can just flow in and not anything can just flow out. It has to be selectively chosen, selectively permeable. And so, this relates and gives us, overall, we've defined basically two types of transport because of this selective permeability. The two types of basic transport that can occur in a cell are very simply put, either passive or the absolute opposite would be active. And we all know that passive transport usually, or um, passive transport always, uh, has no metabolic energy involved, so no metabolic energy and what we simply mean by that is no ATP in other words ATP is that energy currency of a cell if we remember that so no energy whatsoever is necessary for passive transport but we do need something we absolutely need what is known as a concentration I'll just write constant gradient we absolutely need this this is something you gotta star and understand because this gives us stored energy. And I'll talk about that once we talk more about the different types of passive transport. This is just an overall look at transport. So that's passive transport. And active transport, all you need to know is that if this involves no metabolic energy, passive transport then of course involves metabolic energy. So we'll write that down. Metabolic energy is used here. So the first type of transport I want to talk about we're from this point forward, so now we've established the two types of transport, there are subtypes now that we'll talk about. The first subtype I want to talk about is diffusion. Um, so we're going to do this right here, diffusion. And when we talk about a subtype of transport, we're going to write whether or not it's passive or active right next to it so that it's very clear. Diffusion is passive transport, and I'll explain why through these next couple of uh, points. So diffusion is defined as, and this is going to be a, just a basic definition you need to know, so definition, it is the tendency for molecules to spread, tendency for molecules to spread, tendency for molecules to spread out into available available space. Simple as that. Molecules tend to spread out. That's what diffusion sort of relies on and talks about. And when we say this, we mean also just, you know, atoms. We also mean molecules, of course, just like the definition stated. We also mean ions. These types of things have the tendency to spread out into the available space. Basically, what we mean by this is that Let's say we release a bunch of atoms and we release them. They're going to exhibit some random motion initially, but eventually, wherever they are, biology has this rule of them eventually reaching a state of being evenly distributed amongst the place that they are. That's what this is all about, evenly distributed molecules. That's what diffusion is all about. So this is sort of a chemistry look at this. Now let's look at more so the biology of this. The diffusion is also defined as the net movement 
net movement of molecules is always going to be, and this is going to be a term you have to know, it's always, absolutely always, and the term here, the net movement of molecules always goes down, in quotes, the concentration gradient. That's just a rule and a law you have to understand. All I'm saying with this is that if you have molecules at a high concentration in a certain container, let's say you have a bunch of gas molecules at a high concentration in a container, and you open up the container to the room, the room has a low concentration, so those high concentration molecules, what do you expect that container to do? That smell, let's say, of that gas is going to spread because the high concentration is going to move towards wherever there's low concentration. This is what we mean by moving down a concentration gradient. This is going down a concentration gradient, and this happens until equilibrium is reached. So until equilibrium is reached. And we all know that equilibrium is the point at which, let's say, we have an even distribution. Because remember, I said that the molecules want to be evenly distributed. Where did I say that? Right over here. And so, once we have that, then we have equilibrium. And we have equilibrium when we go from a tons of high concentration molecules spreading to the lower concentration areas, this spreading, this net movement, is called moving down a concentration gradient. Um, what I'm going to do is just clear this very quickly um, so that we can finish off this video of talking about the exact diffusion that occurs uh, because I ran out of space. So we're still talking about uh, transport one, still transport one, but uh, also still talking about diffusion. The specific biological type of diffusion that occurs in cells is known as simple diffusion. That's the term you need to know. That is what happens in cells. Simple diffusion happens across a cell membrane. Because remember, this is all about membranes and transport. So we have to remember and always go back to where are we in the cell. We are at the membrane. Simple diffusion occurs at the membrane, and it usually occurs with gases. Gases are things that can simply diffuse. Things like oxygen can simply diffuse into your cells. Things like carbon dioxide can simply diffuse out of your cells. Because guess what? You breathe out carbon dioxide, and you breathe in oxygen. So this is that definition happening in real life. Also, something like nitrogen can go into you or out of you very easily. Other things that can simply diffuse are small nonpolar molecules, and what I mean by this is very small nonpolar molecules. Remember, nonpolar molecules are then going to be hydrophobic molecules. They have to be very, very small. Or what we can have are small polar but uncharged molecules. Can also simply diffuse. And one of those very small polar uncharged molecules, a very famous one, is H2O. But H2O in it of itself is its whole own type of diffusion. And that's called osmosis, and that will be the emphasis of our next flowchart. We'll be talking about osmosis, specifically this part of simple diffusion, and that will be transport 2. So overall, we learned in transport 1 that we have two types of transport, active and passive. Active transport involves metabolic energy. Passive transport does not. But it does involve a concentration gradient. And remember, that concentration gradient, that law is always we go from high concentration to low concentration until equilibrium is established. And once it's established, we've evenly distributed our molecules. Thus, we've had simple diffusion, diffusion transport occur across a cell membrane.